Recently, there's been an influx of new players that have flocked to the Elder Scrolls Online. It should come as no surprise then that many of these new players find themselves in need of a plethora of items. Materials to upgrade their gear, consumables to eat as they venture into their first dungeons, you know the drill. What is surprising, however, for these new players is that so many of these desired items are extremely expensive. Well, this certainly seems to be the case if your only means of obtaining gold comes from game-generated sources, it's like selling off crap to a merchant or looting peasant change off of mobs in the overland. If this is the case, you will soon find that it may very well take an age to be able to afford the items that you need. This is where the importance of trading an ESO comes into play. The reality is that the in-game economy is intricately tied to the guild system in ESO. In order to sell things on the ESO market, you must join a guild that owns a guild trader. You can then list up to 30 items per guild on the guild store and other players will have the chance to access the store to then purchase your wares. So yeah, a lot of items have hefty price tags in ESO, sure, and this has been a hot topic in recent times. But if you actively participate in the trading scene, then these price tags start to become less daunting, seeing as you benefit from this notion as a seller. The ones that truly get impacted by these increasing prices are those that choose to not trade in ESO, and subsequently do not sell their valuable wares to others or do not seek to earn any valuable wares in the first place. In this video, I aim to showcase a variety of the best gold earning strategies for new players. These strats will be very accessible in the sense that they don't require proficiency in the game to partake in them. Ideally, you'll be able to trade the items whose acquisition strategies we will discuss with other players via ESO's trading guild system or via zone chat. Still, even if you wish to have a completely solo experience in ESO, you'll find that the following strategies will provide you with the items necessary to get it done in ESO. Before we delve into the first beginner gold strat, I'd like to quickly debunk a common misconception about earning gold in ESO, and I'm going to use an anecdote to help me out here. The other day, I witnessed a conversation in-game that made me lose a fair amount of brain cells. Someone was in zone chat, complaining about the prices of items and stating that they barely had any gold of their own. Someone else responded, urging this person to consider joining a trading guild to sell some of their wares for gold. The first gamer replied by saying something along the lines of, <laughs> Yeah, no, f that. I like to kill things when I play ESO. Uh, implying that there's no link between uh, killing things and earning gold, I guess. The second player, the one that was trying to help, clarified that they too enjoy killing things when they play, <laughs> and that there are a lot of opportunities to earn valuable items that you can then list on the market for gold by killing things, but... At this point, it was clear that the first gamer was not listening. They uh, started talking about how they're role-playing as a pirate or something in zone chat. But this is something that I hear a lot. Players think that they really have to go out of their way to earn gold and that this might detract from their epic gaming experience. When the reality is that you can earn valuable items passively while you play however you want. Well. Except for role-playing, I guess. You don't really earn gold from doing that, unless you're selling ERP. Some of the strategies in this video may feel a bit grindy. I mean, to be fair, we are playing an MMO, hello? But others don't have to be. ESO has a lot of great systems that reward you financially when you partake in them, like earning alliance points in Telvar when you PvP, or receiving motifs after completing veteran dungeons or receiving valuable materials and furnishing plans as you passively loot nodes and containers across the world while you quest. I recommend finding a gold earning strat that is the most fun for you. Alright, let's go over some of the best beginner-friendly gold strategies. If you ask anyone for a beginner-friendly gold-making strategy, one of the first things that they'll likely say to you is to do your damn rinse. Also, uh, if you're wondering why I made a character that looks like this, um, it's a long story. Watch this video, maybe? The writs that they speak of are the daily crafting writs that can be picked up in the crafting hubs of most major cities. In order to first have access to writs, you'll have to become writ certified, an option that will become available after you reach level 6, which shouldn't take much time at all. 
To become certified, you can speak to Melaneth and Danelle Talano and complete their incredibly simple quests, which require you to have the correct amount of a specific material and to craft a specific item. Do note that you will need to specifically travel to Alenor to talk to Falarian to receive your jewelry training. Upon completing these absolutely riveting quests, that character will be able to pick up crafting quests from the rip boards once each day. Yes, this means that you will have to repeat these certification quests on all of the characters that you wish to do writs on. <laughs> these daily crafting quests ask you to craft a variety of items that are relevant to your current progression in the assortment of existing crafting skill lines. As you advance your skill line over time by crafting and deconstructing gear, you'll be able to sink some skill points into upgrading your crafting proficiency to then receive better rewards from these crafting quests. Do be mindful of the fact that as you advance your crafting skill lines in this manner, daily crafting writs will ask you to craft items that are of a higher level, which will mean that you'll need to have that level's materials on hand. When you turn in your writs at the writ drop-off location, which can be found by consulting the quest markers on your HUD or map, you receive a handful of rewards. Most notably, you receive a bit of gold, some materials that are relevant to the writ in question, and potentially even master writs and surveys. Master writs are additional writs that you can complete for writ vouchers, but as a newer player, you don't have to worry about these for a while, as they require complete proficiency in their relevant skill lines, as well as the knowledge of certain motifs. Surveys on the other hand, are wonderful and can definitely be done by newer players. When you receive a survey, a cluster of resource-rich nodes is added to a specific location and they'll be available to be harvested by the player. The survey itself gives you some clues as to where to find this location, but you can always consult add-ons or online resources to tell you exactly where a survey location is. Because surveys scale to the crafting level of your character, it's advised to complete surveys on characters that have their crafting skill lines maxed out to earn the most valuable resources. On the topic of resource surveys, you can also just straight up farm materials whenever you'd like. Material nodes are scattered all throughout Tamriel, although they are much more bountiful in some areas over others. As a result, it's advised to devise a route that you can then follow in locations that have high node densities to be most efficient with your time. I have two material farming gold guides on my channel whose exact farming routes have been copied to a T and shared by other content creators in their videos without acknowledging me in the slightest. So that has to mean that they're very good routes, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> ESOU also has an excellent resource if you're looking to find a material farming route of your own, a collection of zone maps that indicate the zone density across each location. As I mentioned earlier, it's best to farm the areas with the highest node density. Be mindful of the fact that node spawn timers are affected by the player population in a given zone, and they also share spawn timers with other nodes, meaning that many of the spawn locations won't produce a material until some other material at some other node has been harvested. This makes starter zones ideal material farming locations, seeing as they're full of players and a lot of these players aren't too concerned with running laps around the zone to collect mats. Farming materials is also an incredibly accessible gold making method. All you have to do is go around and harvest any materials that you might find. Ideally, you can run around in a specific loop like the ones outlined in my videos for maximum efficiency. Farming mats can be mind-numbingly boring, however, but it's something that you can do if you're waiting for a battlegrounds or a dungeon queue, or if you're waiting for your friends to hop on ESO, or for your e-girlfriend to log in for a hot ERP session, or if you're doing something else at the same time, like listening to a podcast or an audiobook. When farming materials, it's recommended to pick up everything that you see, given the parameters outlined previously. Don't listen to the silly geese on YouTube that recommend skipping over certain nodes when farming. Ah, I hate talking about crafting in videos. It is so boring to talk about. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to summarize this as quickly as possible. Bear with me, people. As you begin to level up your crafting skill lines and you make some progress researching traits for all kinds of gear, you'll unlock some opportunities to sell crafted wares. Crafting consumables is a great way to turn some of your provisioning and alchemy ingredients into sums of golds that are greater than if you were to just sell those raw items. I'll toss up a graphic on the screen that showcases some valuable potions and foods that you may want to consider crafting and selling for gold. But do recall that to craft foods and drinks, you'll have to have learned their corresponding recipes first. 
Some of these recipes can cost a lot, but many of them can be obtained from participating in ESO events. Crafting gear is also a fairly reasonable gold strategy, although it may not be entirely new player friendly because you do need to have traits researched in order to unlock the opportunity to create gear from certain sets. This may seem a bit overwhelming, so don't worry if it doesn't click immediately. Essentially, you have the option to destroy pieces of gear and traits that you have not yet learned to then research them at a crafting station. After you've learned a trait for a specific piece of gear, you can then craft that gear in that trait. So if I research the Divines trait from a belt, I'll be able to craft a belt in Divines. Once you begin to accumulate a lot of research traits, you'll receive the opportunity to make crafted gear sets, pieces of gear that belong to an actual set. You'll have to do this at an attunable crafting station, which can be accessed through your guild's crafting hall. Otherwise, you can go to the actual crafting station in the Overland, but this is a little inefficient. So because the Order's Wrath set requires three traits in order to be crafted, once I have learned at least three traits for the belt, I'll be able to craft an Order's Wrath belt in one of the traits that I know. I'm mentioning this despite my distaste for describing the ESO crafting system because it is really important to get into crafting early in your ESO career. Researching is time-gated, and the time it takes to research subsequent traits on the same piece of gear increases exponentially, and Zoss tries to get you with those research scrolls that cost crowns. Don't do it! Resist the urge! So it's best that you start researching right away. This way, you can also unlock the opportunity to sell crafted gear to players that can't yet make gear for themselves. I recommend researching the Divines, Training, Sturdy, and Reinforced traits first for your gear, and the Nernhoned, Sharpened, and Precise traits first for your weapons, as a general guiding point. Doing DLC zone dailies was my preferred gold making method when I was still relatively fresh to the game, mostly because it involved actually killing things. You can pick up daily quests from a handful of NPCs across a bunch of DLC zones that assign you specific tasks. These tasks could include killing a specific world boss, finding some items in a delve, or defeating world events, depending on who you speak to. Daily delve quests can be done with ease, as traversing delves is a very solo-friendly activity, but world bosses and world events may give you some grief. You can definitely solo these entities, but that would require a bit of skill, and you may not be there yet as a newer player. Obligatory skill issue joke. If you ever need help, you can always ask for it in zone chat or in your guild chats. If you offer to share a quest in exchange for some help, you'll usually hear back from a few players that are willing to aid you. Upon completing your daily delve, world boss, or world event quest, you can hand it in for a collection of goodies. These rewards include valuable style materials that are needed to craft gear in that style or related furnishings, motifs that can be learned so as to be able to use that motif in an outfit, gear that drops from the zone in question, and sometimes even structural furnishing plans that are also relevant to the zone. Just be mindful of the fact that daily reward coffers that come from quests in Southern Elsewhere and all of the zones that were released afterwards drop motifs on cooldown. Meaning, once you receive a motif from these coffers, your chances at receiving another motif from that exact same type of coffer are immensely throttled until the cooldown, which lasts 20 hours, is up. You can use the add-on Item Cooldown Tracker to help keep track of your cooldowns if you play on PC. It's recommended to open up your reward coffers from a particular zone until you receive a motif, and then wait to open the rest at another time when the cooldown is up. Different daily reward motifs do not share cooldown timers. Most ESO events are made to be able to be completed by anybody, and that includes new players. While many ESO events vary substantially from one another when it comes to the event-related tasks that are available, the core principle remains more or less the same. Complete event tasks, get money. Well, get things, but then you can sell the things for money. Well, technically gold. You get what I mean. Zone-related events, such as the Season of the Dragon event that promoted gameplay in Southern and Northern elsewhere, encourages players to partake in activities in a zone or two to receive double rewards and event tickets for their endeavors. To refer back to that Elsewhere event, for example, players receive double drops from resource nodes, from world events, aka dragons, and from turning in quests, among other things. 
Whenever a zone event is going on, I would greatly recommend completing activities in that zone to capitalize off of the double drops. Because there are so many players in the event zone, it will also be really easy to join large groups of players that hunt down world events or share daily quests with one another, allowing for some very efficient farming. Seasonal events like the New Life Festival or the Witches Festival are different in the sense that they don't take place in any one particular zone. Instead, you're encouraged to partake in event-related tasks that can ask you to go to some of the base game zones. These quests are quite simple to do, like jumping into a frozen lake in Eastmarch or sneaking a pig out of Ebonheart. You'll get what I mean soon enough. Upon completing these quests, you'll receive a handful of rewards. If you're just starting off, selling off motifs and style pages that pertain to the event in question is a great way to make some quick gold. If you're patient, however, you can get much more gold if you hold on to some of these event-related items to sell at a later date. I go over this notion pretty frequently in my seasonal gold guides. Something that you should be mindful of as a newer player is that ESO has a curated loot system. What this essentially means is that upon defeating enemies that drop sets in the overland, in dungeons, and in arenas, you are inclined to receive set pieces that you have not yet collected. You collect a set piece once you bind it, either by equipping it, deconstructing it, selling it to a merchant and it's no longer retrievable, or by outright selecting the bind option in your menu. This sticker book feature, as it has been dubbed by the community, was implemented to reduce the need for grinding for gear in ESO. However, if you do not need a particular piece of gear and that piece of gear just so happens to be valuable, you can use this sticker book system to your advantage. For example, the Inferno Staff of the Mother Sorrow is a classic piece of gear. Oh, I just know that Toxic Elitists are resisting the urge to go, Um, actually, that set is trash now, Artea. There are much better options out there. Yeah, yeah, I know, but that notion hasn't stopped build creators from recommending sets before. Come on now, you know this. Point being, this is a sought-after item. As a result, it can sell for a lot especially in an ideal trait, like a sharpened or precise, as opposed to, say, training or powered. If you have yet to collect a Mother Sorrow Inferno staff, you can then deliberately ensure that you never do. You can collect all of the other less expensive pieces of gear from Deshaun until the only thing that you have not collected from this zone is that Mother Sorrow Inferno staff. Now, anytime you kill an enemy that can drop weapons in this zone, such as a world boss, you'll receive that staff and you can now sell that staff for a fair amount of gold. There are tons of opportunities to employ this strategy with zone gear. A couple other examples would be frostbite weapons in Blackwood, War Maiden weapons in Vardenfell, Briarheart weapons in Rothgar, House Hexos gear in the Deadlands, the list goes on. As you become a more experienced player, you will also find opportunities to employ this strategy in dungeons, trials, and arenas, and be able to sell gear from these instances to willing buyers. So as a new player, be mindful of all of the gear that you pick up. You might not want to just go ahead and bind or collect everything. If you're ever unsure about whether or not an item is valuable, you can look up that item on TTC. Yes, even if you're playing on console, since we are using this site as a tool for reference. Tamriel Trade Center is a great resource that allows PC players to locate items on the market and to see the current listings for an item. If you look up the piece of gear that you just received, you can take a look at what others are listing that item for. If you see a bunch of very low values, then you can presume that it's not valuable and it's safe to deconstruct. But if you see some values that impress you, then maybe it's best to sell that item and potentially receive it again from an overland drop rather than binding it. While the listing prices will not be relevant to the console economies, console players can still get an idea for whether or not the item that they have is even worth anything. You can always ask players in zone chat or players in your guilds for assistance on this matter as well. There are tons of gamers in ESO that are willing to help. These are just a few gold strategies that can help get you on your feet. Once you become more proficient in the game, you'll be exposed to countless opportunities to earn gold while you play, many of which are outlined on my channel. I just want to reiterate that as a newer player, I would definitely take advantage of any passive gold farming strategies that you can employ, like looting absolutely everything while you quest, or picking up nodes anytime you see them, or deconstructing gear that is not valuable for upgrade and style materials. 
rather than selling it off to a merchant for a measly sum of gold. Rather than repeating myself, I would recommend all of the videos on my channel that go over these matters. They may be old, and the quality of some of them might be shite, but the advice that I give in those videos is still sound. But that's all for now. If you have any questions about earning gold in ESO as a newer player, feel free to leave a comment or join my Discord server. And if you're a veteran player that is watching this video and has a few tips of their own that were not discussed, feel free to share them as well. I'm also curious to know, how did you first start earning gold in ESO? For me, I started by spamming world boss dailies, because like those two goofballs that I mentioned earlier, I too enjoy killing things when I play ESO. If you're looking for a trading guild on PCNA that does not ask for any dues or requirements, I'd be happy to have you in my guild as well while you learn the ropes of trading in ESO. Thank you so much for watching, and if you're new to ESO, welcome! I hope you have a great time and that you decide to stick around for a while. Thank you to my YouTube members for sponsoring my content, and I'll see you gamers in the next video. Cheers.